We usually think of the three branches of government as the president, Congress, and the Supreme Court. But it's down here in the lower federal courts where President Trump is building his longest lasting legacy. You know, when I got in, we had over a hundred federal judges that weren't appointed. It was like a big, beautiful present to all of us. Federal courts hear lawsuits involving the Constitution or laws made by Congress. Say a city pays a female employee less than her male counterpart. That violates the Equal Pay Act, a federal law. So that case would start here, where all federal lawsuits start, in a district court. There's at least one in every state. For example, California is home to 61 judges who serve on the state's four district courts. If the case is appealed, it moves up to the aptly named Court of Appeals. It's made up of 13 circuit courts, and they each hear cases from different parts of the country. So a case that started in California will move up to the Ninth Circuit Court because they hear cases from the western part of the U.S. If it's appealed again, it'll go to the Supreme Court. But they only hear less than 100 cases a year. The circuit courts, they hear 50,000. For most federal cases, these judges give the final precedent-setting ruling. They're kind of a big deal. And every single judge here is nominated by the president and serves for life. Now here's a chart showing how many circuit court judges a president confirmed by what time in their presidency. There's Ronald Reagan's, and this is George H.W. Bush's, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush. All pretty consistent, right? Now here's Barack Obama's. Look how it totally flatlines in his last two years. That's because all federal judges are nominated by the president, but then have to be confirmed by a vote in the Senate. And after the 2014 election, Republicans gained control in the Senate, and Mitch McConnell stopped holding votes on nearly all of Obama's court picks, from the Supreme Court all the way down to the district courts. So when Trump took office, not only did he have a ton of vacant seats to fill, he had a Republican-controlled Senate to help fill them, quickly. In fact, Trump has appointed more circuit court judges in the first half of his first term than any other modern president. But his judges are different. This is where all the judges nominated by each president fall on a scale between liberal and conservative, determined by their past political donations. And here's the median score for those judges. You can see that appointees on both sides have moved further to the left and right of their party's medians. But Trump's median pick is more conservative than Obama's was liberal, and more conservative than his Republican predecessors. And if you look at the ideological distribution of judges appointed by previous presidents, you can see tails at either end. Both Republican and Democratic presidents appointed some judges that leaned the other way. But Trump? Not really. Traditionally, presidents need to work with the Senate. If a judgeship opens up in, say, Texas, the nominee would need the approval of the Texas senators. No approval, no vote. It makes presidents compromise with the opposite party and prevents them from stacking the courts with super partisan judges. That's why these past presidents had to have a spectrum of judges. But when Trump nominated two men for seats on the Ninth Circuit, the court that keeps overturning Trump's executive orders, the two Democratic senators from California opposed both of them, calling them far outside the judicial mainstream. One because of some controversial writings in college, and the other because of his prior work as a defense lawyer, including for oil companies where he argued climate change isn't real. Normally, this would mean they would never get a vote, let alone a hearing. But Republicans aren't honoring the century-old informal rule. And judges are being confirmed without the support of either home state senators, including those two on the Ninth. Trump has now appointed seven new judges to the Ninth Circuit, one because Obama's nominee wasn't allowed a vote, and four without the approval of home state senators. He's expected to appoint at least two more judges before his first term is over. This is what the circuit courts looked like when Trump became president at the beginning of 2017. And here's how the courts look halfway through 2019. It's expected that every president gets to have an impact on the federal courts. That's normal. But Trump only got to fill these seats because of McConnell's refusal to hold a vote on Obama's picks. None of these Trump picks had the support of both senators from their home state. And as a group, Trump's picks are more conservative than his Republican predecessors. In 2018, Mitch McConnell laid out his goals for the federal judiciary in a radio interview. 
appointing uh, and confirming these strict constructionists to the courts who are in their late 40s or early 50s. And we're making a generational change in our country that will be uh, repeated over and over and over down through the years. And his plan is working. 